I definitely need it at the minute. And so this is just giving me that extra dopamine boost, which I'm really grateful for. I can see why this has turned into a popular destination to hike to. Is that good, Frank? everybody I have just been outside it is still early I outside is freezing cold you've seen I'm gonna put a little shot of what it looks like but this is the temperature inside it's like two or three degrees Celsius and that's like 32 just above 32 degrees Fahrenheit for you Americans it has been so cold in here and I have not been able to use the diesel heater that I installed because I didn't have enough ducting and it didn't quite reach and it was pumping underneath one of my dinette seats and not out into the main area and then I tried to cut the hole for the um, ducting entrance a little bigger but I didn't have a saw so I was using a hole drill and the pocket knife saw this thing crazy does not work very well for cutting round holes anyway I was rummaging around behind my driver's seat and I found another piece of ducting I had prepared I was organized past me got on top of it so I have just gone outside this morning in the freezing cold put the extra piece of ducting in and now it is shooting hot air out into my main living space and I am so grateful. <sighs> I'm giving it a big jet of heat to warm it up. Warm the space up. Cause I'm wearing every single piece of cloth I own. Eh? Clothing I own. Not really, but I'm wearing three layers of pants, about four layers of tops. And this one here, it's difficult in winter cause I put all the clothes on and then I look at my body and I look like I'm huge and I'm like, Flossy, that's not the size of you. That's the size of you plus five layers of clothing. That's okay, it's winter. <sighs> it's a little tricky for my um, mind body perception, um, which sometimes feels triggering because I used to have an eating disorder, but you know, I'd rather be warm. So this is supposed to sit flush in the wall, but I measured the hole and then cut it a few mil too small. So I really either have to sand it out or get a jigsaw and borrow that from somewhere because it just doesn't quite fit. However, that's just sitting over top of that. Oh, that's hot. Um, to kind of protect it a little bit. But I'm so happy that it's pumping hot air into my living space, finally. Previously, under the dinette, it was pumping hot living, hot air into a little cubby underneath this dinette seat. And so under there was getting warm, but it wasn't fully coming out here. And so now I'm gonna have that installed properly very soon. It'll be recessed in, the ducting is coming out. I routed it all the way through to the back. I'm so happy. I'm so relieved to have heat. And then I can leave it on overnight and not freeze which will be so nice. Last night was really, really cold. Um, I have been, I, whenever I come somewhere, I have to do two things. I have to ration the firewood, making sure that the amount of firewood that I've brought from my fireplace is exactly the right amount. And then if I haven't got enough, like slow down on using it. And I used a whole ton the first day I was here and I wasn't even thinking about rationing. And now I'm like, ugh. So I had to make one day's worth of firewood last two days. So that's yesterday and today. So we're doing okay, but having this heater changes everything. I can just stand here and be warm. <laughs> so happy. It is below freezing outside and it is creeping up to five degrees in here. So that's a huge change and I'm very, very relieved. Nothing beats stopping and getting a hot chocolate and I have a giant marshmallow. It's so good. Yay! Let's go. 
the adventure begin. You're so cute, Greg. You excited for today's adventures? I am! <laughs> Uh, what are we up to today? Um, we're gonna go get baked goods. That's a great yeah, start. Yeah. Probably a hike. Yeah. And then I think we're gonna find a train wreck. Right. Which is cool, and I know nothing about any of this, so it's like a massive adventure for me. Yeah, even though I've been around here for a long time, these are new hikes we're doing. I've not done these. Woo! I just know the suspension bridge hike is like fucking popular. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, the same like, with Lynn Canyon suspension bridge. Oh yeah. Well, I was actually gonna suggest a different hike that's like a little longer, like a little more elevation. And I was like, no, Amanda, don't. <laughs> Let's pace ourselves. Let's and be just sensible. Do the suspension bridge and not do the lake. That we might end up in the snow. <laughs> yes. After a nice slow morning now midday it's still morning we had tasty pastries some hot drinks the luxuries of being near civilization and look I found this at a consignment store I would never buy this kind of thing brand new but I was so stoked I've been looking for a yellow west coast winter jacket for a while and finally found one of my colors Wow Look at the color of that water. So pretty and so clear. Do you want me to be an influencer? Of course. We have arrived! Ooh, it's so pretty!
one. Hike one and we got like a splash of sunshine twice. Yeah. She's lovely. Yeah, her goes like a steep down to like the suspension bridge. We crossed the suspension bridge and then we're at the train track. Yay! And I don't know how close we are, but we've got a little tiny bit of sun left. Just a wee bit. We have found the river. And the forest is really beautiful. So gorgeous. A lot of this area has mountain biking trails through it, which is beneficial because it means pedestrian access can get into more places like this. And to beautiful rivers and views. And this one, we can take Frank. This is so cool. Are you having a great time, bud? You enjoying coming on a walk? On a little stroll? Yeah. The train wreck occurred on August 11th, 1956. The train started from Lillooet, 130 kilometers north of Whistler, where it was loaded with lumber bound for Vancouver. It's huge! Well, it's not huge, but it's like in the middle of nowhere where I didn't expect. It was behind schedule, so trying to make up, the train tried to go faster. What? With the train going more than twice the speed limit, the wreck happened on a narrow stretch of track that had been cut on a sharp curve. What? Twelve boxcars derailed, some were wedged, blocking the track for days. Where did the where where the heck did the train line used to be? There's carriages there, there. Yeah, there's two up there. Wow, they're so colorful with all this graffiti around them. What? At the time of the wreck, the rail line was the only direct way to move resources and people from Squamish to Lillooet. So this happened from a derailment. And to get the trains back on schedule, they just pushed them further in, back into the forest. It's crazy. What? What? <laughs> wow. Everyone depended on the train and delays were a big problem. Five of the derailed box cars were salvageable, but the remaining seven were too damaged to save. Ooh. Those seven box cars were stripped of all useful material, dragged out of the way here. Oh, and there's another one over there. I can see why this has turned into a popular destination to hike to. Much like when there's a uh, downed aircraft in the middle of the forest who people seek them out and go find them. I'm assuming maybe the train line is up there? That way? Maybe. Wow. Ah. I'm so glad that we got here with a little daylight left. Train track is up there. And then... One, two, three, four, five train carriages. Just right here which was the quickest way to get the trains back on schedule. Over the years, Trainwreck has become a favorite destination for graffiti artists, movie makers like Amanda and I, mountain bikers and hikers. It smells like as if this was an old coal train. Maybe it wasn't, but it's kind of got like smoky smell. Wow, I must look at the sign and see what train this was. It's wild. I hope you enjoy coming to this with me in the Whistler's temperate rainforest. Take some turns. 
happening with you because there's people and people who have dogs on the, on leashes that we don't understand. Dark, bud. We're gonna have to make it back before it gets too dark. <laughs> mm, the fair forest has kind of got that eerie kind of feeling where things get a little magical. What are you doing? <laughs> the paparazzi, stop it! Go away! <laughs> Happy full moon, everybody. Well, good evening, everybody. We are back at camp. I nearly lost my keys, but I did not because somehow I just have a lucky star and I'm very grateful for it. But I'm only heating the heat the van with the diesel heater tonight. This is my first time ever running the whole thing from start to finish um, to warm it fr from warm the van up from scratch. Um, I haven't put the fireplace on because I really wanted to do a comparison to see with this size space how long it takes for the heater to warm this area up. Now we have caveat got two pots going. I boiled a pot of water over the stove for tea and we are heating up the leftovers from last night's dinner to make pasta stoop. Um, but it took about an hour to go from less than zero degrees to 15 degrees and rising rapidly. It's going to get super toasty and warm in here and I'm going to, to turn the temperature and the speed of the fuel pump down. I'm happy to have a second option and know that that time is what it's going to take when it's this cold out and I've been away from the van but really if you're dressed up warm you do a whole lot of moving around settling back into being at home and then by the time you're done and all cleaned up the house is warm. Smaller spaces definitely warm up faster. And look who also came down to visit. Hey Frank! <laughs> You're so adorable! Today is a work day for me. I have to do a lot of editing and some writing. And in the background here, we have some water filtering. Um, I only brought a 10 liter water jug with me because it is so cold outside and my water tank is actually mounted under the van, which would mean it would absolutely freeze in temperatures like this and do damage to my plumbing and my pumps and all of that. And I don't want that. So I've been using this little jug and we have collected water from the river, um, hung it up here and it is filtering to give us beautiful, tasty, fresh drinking water. I am very stoked and definitely plan on getting a system like this for myself soon, especially if I'm gonna be traveling further, more remotely. It is very useful and it means in winter time, you don't have to do as much relying on searching for open public water taps, which become very rare in Canada or going into places to ask for water. So I have the fire on, some water heating to drink and the water is purifying this 10 liter jug lasted me for drinking water and cooking water for three and a half days which is pretty good look at these frost shadows 
near here because the sunshine has come out and tickled them. So pretty. Is that good, Frank? Oh, you bringing it to me? Oh, you bringing it to me? You want me to check it for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We playing fetch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that good? Gonna fill up water. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so much easier. Oh, there's ice everywhere. Yeah, I have to get like good and wedged so I'm stable. Whoa. And I have to be very careful. Yes. I have to get my hands very cold because I can't get safely to where there's like a better... Too dangerous. I don't think it would hear me if it would Oh! My fingers are cold watching you! There we go. Ice, there's it's ice everywhere. I'm standing on like slick ice there. Okay. Yay! Oh, there's still sunlight up there. Get into cozy daytime time. We will probably not film after this, but we have snacks, fire. It's gonna be lovely. We'll probably see you all tomorrow. Good night.